So let us see what will happen in today's session. What is the justice the man will get? The rule doctrine of laps. They didn't allow anybody from the man's side to sit in the inquiry commission. The man accepted the words from the inquiry commission. Let us see whether the man will rebel or he will just accept the words and keep on going building the huts. Man is too good here. Just like Indians, you can fool people for a time, but not forever. Hello, hi, namaste and welcome to Vidyashram, Temple of Excellence. I am Nanda Kishore, Faculty of English in Vidyashram, Mysore. In my previous session, I had discussed about the chapter, The Gentleman of the Jungle, written by Yomo Kenyatta. Let me just give you a recap about what I had discussed in my previous session. In the chapter, The Gentleman of the Jungle, we know that man and elephant had established friendship between an elephant goes to the man asking for a favor to save itself from the torrential rain and in return man helps the elephant asking him to keep it strunk inside the hut as there was no space for both of them but what will the elephant do later eventually it will sneak inside the hut and it will fling out the man outside and as the man starts grumbling, the lion will enter the scene and it will promise the man that he will be getting back his hut. And not just that, the lion will order the elephant to appoint the commission of enquiry and report it to the lion accordingly. And now the elephant started to appoint the committee members and who are the five committee members? Don't forget, this will be asked for one mark and the five committee members are Five committee members are Mr. Buffalo, Mr. Rhinoceros, Mr. Alligator and most importantly the Right Honourable Mr. Fox to act as a chairman and Mr. Leopard to act as a secretary. And as the committee members are chosen now, they will sit to take the evidence and first they call the elephant to give the evidence and elephant will come brushing its tusks with the sapling which was given by Mrs. Elephant and in the majestic voice the elephant will tell my dear jungle lords I don't want to waste your valuable time as you know that all these things all this sequence all this scene which has happened before you are well aware about and I was not doing any injustice to the man I was just performing my sacred duty by occupying the undeveloped space in his hut and moreover it was not me who went and occupied the man's hut it was the man who came and requested me to come and occupy the undeveloped space just because to save his hut from the hurricane and it was not my mistake it was the mistake of man and the lion pitches into the picture and according to his order i am just doing my duty being one of the high ministers of this jungle i have not just done any injustice to the man and once the elephant gives evidence the commission or the inquiry commission will call the man to give his evidence and when man comes and stands to give evidence the inquiry commission will cut him short and when he is about to say no, they will just pause this evidence taking, they will break for lunch. In today's session, let me just tell you what will happen further. So let's start with session 2. Now as we know, inquiry committee members have questioned the man if, if the unoccupied space was occupied by the elephant before anybody could come and occupy the space and when the man is about to give his evidence they will cut him short now let us see what happens in today's session it is called declaration i have named it as declaration and now in my previous session i had stopped till the inquiry commission stopping the man before he could give his evidence and what will the inquiry commission declare now let us see it in today's session but at this point the commission retired to consider their decision after enjoying the delicious meal at the expense of the right honorable mr elephant they reached their verdict called the man and declared as 
follows. Now remember one thing, they didn't allow the man to speak even a single word. When he was about to speak in front of the commission of inquiry, they cut him short, they break for the lunch and they will have the lunch from the expense of right honorable Mr. Elephant. They will come back and they will declare as follows. Let us see what they will declare. I have named it justice served. What is the justice the man will get? In our opinion, this dispute has arisen through a regrettable misunderstanding due to the backwardness of your ideas. They are referring to the man mentality as backwardness. You are not up to the mark. You have a very cheap mentality and you didn't have enough maturity to allow the elephant to come and occupy your heart. And that is called the backwardness of your ideas. We consider that Mr. Elephant has fulfilled his sacred duty of protecting your interests and ideas. So, Elephant has performed his sacred duty, not just duty, it is a sacred duty. They are praising themselves. They are not ready to give up their own kind. So, that's exactly what Britishers did. As I told in previous session, we were imposed a lot of rules and regulations. In my previous session, I had discussed about the rule doctrine of lapse. According to this rule, in India, when Britishers ruled India, they had imposed this rule on Indian kings and queens. As per this rule, none of the Indian kings and queens were not allowed to give the property to the adopted son. If they have their own children, only then they are liable of giving the property to the next generation. If they are adopted, if the son or the daughter is adopted, then the property or the kingdom or the territory would fall in the hands of British. So that is a comparative example for the scenario in the gentleman of the jungle. If the unoccupied space was left, it should be given to the rightful heir or it should be given to the other people. If it is left unoccupied, then the animals, so-called representatives of European powers, they would come and occupy the undeveloped space. So let us see what happens later. As it is clearly for your good that the space should be put to its most economic use and as you yourself have not reached, not yet reached, the stage of expansion. What does it mean? They are indirectly saying that you cannot expand yourself the way elephant does. You are not educated enough the way European have. And you are not mentally mature enough to understand the intricacy of jungle laws. And they are telling that you have not yet reached the stage of expansion which you would enable you to fill it. We consider it necessary to arrange a compromise to suit both parties. Mr. Elephant shall continue his occupation of your hut, but we give you permission to look for a site where you can build another hut more suited to your needs and we will see that you are well protected. The cunning inquiry commission is allowing the elephant to occupy the hut and they betrayed the just, they were not up to the mark and they did not favor the man and moreover they didn't allow anybody from the man's side to sit in the inquiry commission and whatever justice they took, whatever justice they gave was final. Above all, they allowed the man to look for another site and they are promising, this is a false promise, they are promising man, they will look after the man and he, he would be well protected. And what will happen to the hut now? It will be occupied so that the elephant will continue occupying your hut. Next what follows? Weakness is strength. Once the man accepted the words from the inquiry commission, animals took him for granted. They thought man has no strength or no courage to go against us. So they took his weakness as their strength. But was he really weak? We have to wait and see that. Man fearing that his refusal might expose him to the teeth and claws, of whom teeth and claws of the members of the commission did as they suggested. Now. This is exactly what the scenario was in India. Indian soldiers were just sepoys under British army. Britishers, they took charge of higher positions and they ordered, they appointed the Indian soldiers 
in the lower or subordinate positions so that they would not rebel against their masters. So when the British masters gave command to the Indian soldiers, lower order, they didn't have any other option except accepting the words of the master and just act accordingly. So this is exactly what the man did in the gentleman of the jungle. But that doesn't mean the Indians were just weak. Remember the rebel of 1857, the Sepoy mutiny, the Indian soldiers, the Indian people, the Indian tribal people, the rebel against the mighty European power. So what will happen in this chapter? Let us see whether the man will rebel or he will just accept the words and keep on going building the huts. But no sooner had he built another hut than Mr. Rhinoceros charged in with his horn lowered and ordered the man to quit. First time Mr. Elephant occupied and he got the man's hut. Second time the inquiry commission had promised the man that he will be well protected. So fearing that he would be exposed to the teeth and claws of jungle lords. He built another hut. He built another hut. And what happened to another hut? What happened to second hut? It was occupied by Right Honorable Minister the Rhinoceros. This could be asked for one mark. Who occupied his second hut? It is Rhinoceros. How did he charge in? By lowering his horn. What follows next? This followed until all the animals, not just one or two, until all the animals in the jungle were accommodated with a hut. So he built a first hut which was occupied by elephant. He built a second hut which was occupied by rhinoceros. He, he went on building the hut until all the animals in the jungle, they had individual huts. So until then, the man had not left his hope of getting back his huts. But anything which is too much is too bad. Anything which is too good is also too bad. Now, man is too good here. Just like Indians, we just accepted the Europeans like traders. They came to India to trade pepper. They came to India like traders. What did they do later? They established their own colony and they took charge of India. And we were just not quiet. We did what we, what we could. We were not quiet. Just take for an example, Bhagat Singh, Rajguru Sukhdev, all these people, all the national fighters, all the martyrs, all the martyrs of our land, they were not quiet. It could, it could be anybody, it could be Gandhiji, right from Gandhiji, it could be even a single person, a single soldier, be it a woman or a man or any religion or any caste or any creed. Whenever Indians got opportunity, they struck hard on Britishers. So that's what the man will do as we proceed further. Set a trap. Man was waiting for an opportunity to strike. What did he do now? He had waited patiently. He built his all the huts he could and all the animals were accommodated with each hut. Now he was fed up. He was not relying on inquiry commission because inquiry commission or the commission of inquiry never took side of man. So he had to come up with a measure. He had to come up with an idea to teach a lesson to the jungle lords. What will he do now? The man decided to adopt an effective method of protection. Since commission of inquiry did not seem to be of any use to him, he sat down and said, Eng endati engaga muteki, which means, this is quite difficult to pronounce, but which means, which literally means, there is nothing that treads on the earth that cannot be trapped. Or, in other words, you can fool people for a time, but not forever can you do it you can fool people for some time maybe for a day for a week for a month for a year most probably but not above that you cannot keep fooling the people because once they get to know that you are fooling around them they will take charge of you and what will the man do now justice served well what will the man do now Early one morning, when the rest of the huts began to decay, he went and built a bigger, better hut, bigger and better hut, a distance away. Not just too far away, just a distance away. Soon, all the animals fought for their places in the hut, while the man set the hut on fire and burned it to the ground and went home saying, Peace is costly, but it's worth the expense and lived happily ever after. If you see in this picture, this is a bigger and better hut 
and the crocodile is already basking on the roof elephant is already lying inside the hut very aram say he has already gone in himself he has put himself in the hut before anybody could walk into the hut and he is laying there aram say and very freely he is just taking a nap and what are the rest of the animals doing here you can just see mr leopard lion buffalo and fox all of them are waiting to enter the hut and once when the man learns that all the animals are fighting for their places he will just lit the fire and he will burn down the entire hut into the ashes and he goes home saying that peace is costly but it's worth the expense you can expect a six mark question on this quote peace is costly but it's worth the expense elucidate the answer with reference to the chapter the gentleman of the jungle you should be able to answer with reference to this quote so that's it for today's session in my next session i am going to discuss about the chapter around the medicinal creeper written by purnachandra tejasvi until then see you have a good day